two more types of numbers that you need to know are multiples and factors. The first, multiples, is a number that appears in the times table for a number. Um, so what I mean by that is, for example, you could say 30 is a multiple of 6 because uh, 30 is 6 times 5. Similarly, I could say that 18 is a multiple of 6 because 18 is 6 times 3 and so on. Every number has an infinite number of multiples. What I mean by that is you can pick a number as big as you want and then times it by the same one that we're trying to find multiples of. So if I'm trying to find a really big multiple of 6, I can pick a massive number. So I could pick 1024 and times that by 6. And I know straight away that the answer is going to be a multiple of 6 because I've times it by 6. So in this case, the answer is 6144. So this is a multiple of 6 as well. The other one, factors, is defined as the numbers that go into another number. What I mean by that is, for example, you can say that 2 is a factor of 8 because 8 divided by 2 is 4. This is a whole number, an integer, so it is a factor. Most integers have multiple factors, for example, 12 has quite a few. 12 has the factors 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Or, for example, you could have 20. The factors of 20 would be 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. So it's any number that you can divide it by and get a whole number back, an integer back. Example one, types of numbers. State which of the words below correctly describe the number 3.5. So we've got three options. Is it a rational number, a prime number, and a square number? So I'll quickly define what each of these is. So rational means you can write it as a fraction. So an integer over an integer as a fraction. Prime means it only has two factors. So for example, two is prime because the only factors it has are one and two. 5 is prime because the only factor it has are 1 and 5, and so on. A square number is one that is made by squaring a number. So, for example, 4 is a square number because it's 2 squared. 9 is a square number because it's 3 squared, and so on. So, let's see if we can rule any of these out. Well, prime numbers, they are all integers. They're all whole numbers. We've got a decimal, so that rules out that option. A square number, again, all of those are going to be integers because they're made from an integer squared. So that rules out that option, which narrows it down just to rational. So we've got the answer. So 3.5 is a rational number. How do we know that it's a rational number? Because I can write 3.5 as 7 over 2. I've wrote it as a fraction that has integer parts. 7 is an integer, 2 is an integer. If I try to write it as a fraction and I need to use something a bit ridiculous like a square root, etc., to make it be written as a fraction. It's not a rational number. Okay, it has to be two integers, one on the top, one on the bottom. To double check this, you can just do seven divided by two, which will return you 3.5, just to make sure you're 100% confident in your answer. Example two, rational numbers. State which of the following numbers is rational, giving a reason for your answer. So we've got four different numbers, root five, 0 0.6 recurring, pi and minus the square root of eight. Okay, so let's focus on the square roots first. Root five and minus the square root of eight, root eight. Okay, so unless the number within the root is a square number, as in it is four, 9, 16, and so on, or, or you could have 1 as well, 1 squared is 1, and so on, it will return a non-rational number. The reason being, it will be an infinite, non-recurring decimal. I've used some quite big words there. But what that means is the number after the decimal point will go on forever, and non-recurring means it's not just the same number over and over again. It's different every time. So these two are not rational. We've narrowed it down to two. The last two, a little bit tricky to think about. Pi is 3.14159, and it carries on forever. So infinitely, 
You can just keep going. It changes every single time. Well, not every time, but close to every time. It's not just loads of sixes in a row or loads of sevens in a row, etc. So this is what, what we call non-recurring, as in it's not just the same number in a row. So this one is not rational either. This is a really famous number, so you should just remember that this one is non-rational, as in we can't write it as a fraction. So we've narrowed it down. We know that it's this one, but how do we know that it is actually rational? Well, I can write it as a fraction. So 0 0.6 recurring, this means 0 0.6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, and so on. It just keeps going on forever with sixes. I can write this as a fraction as two thirds. So I've wrote it as a fraction with a integer value on the top and integer value on the bottom. So it's definitely rational. If you found this video useful, why not try out our topic exam on our learning platform? Here you can find a series of questions to assess your knowledge and get instant feedback on how you did. So here I can see a written solution explaining how I should have solved this problem and also a video solution where someone will talk me through it to say exactly how I should have done it if I'm still not sure. The learning platform includes every topic on the GCSE course. They can all be found here split into the separate sections and it is an all-inclusive course.